Hey guys, welcome back. Now, I've had the opportunity to review a couple of really cool monitors. I've reviewed the um, Prism Plus F270i Pro monitor. I've also um, reviewed the uh, Prism Plus as well, X490 monitor, really cool monitor. Now, I'm going to review another monitor today, and this one is equally unique, but for different reasons. Um, we have all sorts of monitors, and I focus a lot on gaming monitors, but um, today, ASUS actually reached out to me, and they actually sent over a portable monitor. All right, so today I'm going to review, and even though you can't tell from the box, it is the ASUS ZenScreen Go, also known as the ASUS MB16AP. Okay, let's open it up. Oh, very nice. Okay. Something else? Ah, okay. So there is this. What is this? Oh, okay. That's cool. So they, it comes with all sorts of different electrical outlet standards. Uh, this is the charging outlet. Oh, um, okay. So that's what you basically do. You Yeah, so you just choose the socket that you need and plug it in. Uh, the plastic. Okay, so plug it in and USB charger. So guessing the cables inside here. All right, so let's open this up. Well, well, okay, first things first, very nice box design. And oh, they are a Red Dot Design Award winner. So if you're not familiar with Red Dot, um, so Red Dot, Awards are held every year in Singapore where they give awards to the best designs in a whole bunch of different categories and I've attended a couple of them and some of the designs there are amazing. So, well, yeah, looks like they won the design award two years ago, which also lets you know how old this monitor is, I guess, or at least when it was released. Let's open this up. Okay. Ah, <laughs> I wanted to speak about this. So, it comes with a pen. When we, or when I first heard about this, I got really excited because I'm like, oh my god, it's a touchscreen? It's not. It's just a pen. And I'll tell you why they give this thing uh, in a bit. But for now, let's open up the monitor. So this is the Zen screen. Now, earlier on, I mentioned that it's the Zen screen Go, also known as the ASUS Zen screen MB16AP. Uh, the reason why I mentioned it is that there are actually two variants of this. There's an MB16AP, and the MB16AC. Now, they are both identical in terms of the panel and almost everything else. The only major difference is that the AP, MB16AP, is the one that actually has an internal battery in it. So it's got a 7,800 milliamp battery, which is really cool. If you, if you think about it, it's what, double the battery capacity of most smartphones. Very nice design. It's a lot lighter than I expected, to be honest. Looking at the buttons, you've got a power button. Okay, and you've got these two buttons, which I assume is for the menu. And oh yeah, <laughs> about this pen. Um, what it's really for is as a stand. So what you can do is you can actually put the pen through the hole here that they have here. There's no other reason for this. It's just for this. And what you can do is you can actually <laughs> You can prop it up. So this is the only reason they're giving you the pen. Not because it's touch screen or anything, it's just so that you can do this. Now, yeah, I think we all know you can do this with pretty much any pen, but <laughs> I mean, kudos to ASUS, they gave it. So nice, and it's, well, it's not an ugly looking pen, it's quite nice. But yeah, so if you ever lose this, any pen will do, or anything is around this shape, I guess. Okay, so you've got your manual as usual. Oh, does it have a... A case. Oh, it does! Nice! Okay, honestly, I thought this was a separate accessory. I thought you had to buy this, but they're giving it free. Well done, Asus. You know, unlike some uh, <clears throat> looking at you, Microsoft, where your case is separate. But anyway. <laughs> they feel like it's almost the same weight. Actually, you know what? Let me try it out. So, okay, so this is the weight of the screen let me move this away suddenly my table feels really small um yeah so thing is i don't even know how to put this okay so this is where the manual comes in handy uh, 
okay, so folding side is on the screen. So this and oh, it's magnetic. Okay, yeah, it's magnetic. Very nice. So you fold it up like that, and then it becomes your stand. Okay, so yeah, you have two choices: either you use this, or you just use the the cover. It's cool. Oh, because this is also magnetic. This parts are also magnetic. Wow, very well done, Asus. I'm really impressed. The amount of attention and detail has gone into this design. Very, very impressed. And it looks really, really good. I, I understand now why that they won this Red Dot Design Award. Very, very nice. I know I keep saying very, very nice, but it is impressive. I mean, a lot of a lot of companies tend to just, you know, they design the monitor or design whatever, and then, you know, the casing is an afterthought. But I can tell they put in a lot of effort in this. And it goes up. Very good protection for your screen. And yeah, it does feel significantly heavier now with just with the with the cover on. But hey, you if you buy this, I'm sure you want it to be well protected. So cool. Now if you're wondering if the cover comes free, why do you need the pen? Well, the cool thing about this monitor is it has a built-in gyroscope. So that means that you can auto detect the orientation that you set the monitor in. So let's say for example, if I have it like this, all right, it will show it accordingly. I can put it up, put the pen, and it will detect that it is being set in portrait mode, okay, and it will reorientate the screen. Okay, now I'll, of course I'm going to show that in a bit, but that's actually really cool as well. You don't have to go into your window setting, change the orientation, it does it automatically. Okay, so quite cool. And yeah, so I'm guessing that if you had the, the cover on, you probably can't put it on portrait mode. So let's try that. Okay. Uh, oh no, it's supposed to go the other way. Okay. Oh my gosh, you actually can. If you look at the back, they have this sort of like folds. Now, is that. To... Nah, it's not. <laughs> no, that's not stable. Are you supposed to fold it backwards? That's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. But because of this is not slid, right? I can't bend it unless they want me to purposefully do that. And I don't see how that would be a good idea. I'm sure maybe there is something I'm supposed to do that will allow it to stand on portrait, but no. Yeah, so if you want to do this on portrait, definitely use the, the ASUS pen. One more thing. So this is the cable that comes with the 10 screen Go. Now, okay, so it comes to the USB type C, but the another awesome thing about ASUS, they really, really thought of everything. They, they It comes with an USB type C to USB 3 converter, okay? So now, this is especially good for me and I really appreciate this touch. It's because now for me, I have obviously I have my gaming PC, but on the go, I have my Surface Pro 4, which I am absolutely in love with. It is one of the favorites, my one of the favorites, is not a word, one of the, the best things I ever bought. The irritating thing is that it doesn't have USB Type-C. In fact, it only has two ports. You have your mini display port, and your USB 3.0, okay? And it's been years and Microsoft has refused to add anything. Microsoft, if you're listening, and yeah, I know there's a low chance that you are, but please add in a USB Type-C. It's been years and every other laptop has one. So Asus, they, it comes with a USB Type-C to USB 3, okay? Um, the flip side is, now if you have a laptop that has a USB Type-C and you connect it to this to extend your monitor, uh, you don't need any drivers. However, if you use this, then you do need a driver, which you can find on the website, okay? Um, I've already pre-installed it um, to save some time. But um, yeah, so let's let's give it a go. Plug it in. Ah, and it's 12% battery. Oh, well, hey, don't blame me. I just did the unboxing with you guys, so... Um, yeah, I need to charge it first. Three weeks later. So, one hour of charging turned into about almost three weeks. Um, what actually happened was when I charged the Zenstream Go to full, uh, I tried it again, plugged it into my Surface using the USB Type-C to USB 3.0 adapter and it still didn't work. So, 
I tried my troubleshooting, I checked my USB port on the Surface Pro and you know, it was working fine. Um, I tested this on my phone and it worked fine. Um, but yeah, it just didn't work on my Surface. So I contacted someone in ASUS uh, and told them what was happening. And they were really quick. They, they, they checked it out, they checked with the technical team and they did some tests and they found out that the, the issue actually lies with my Surface Pro or specifically the Surface Pro 4 and below. So the power delivery from that port isn't enough to send uh, the video to the screen. Uh, we tested it on a Surface Pro 6 and that actually worked. So yeah, if you are looking to get this and you have a Surface Pro, um, so far we know the Surface Pro 6 works. Surface Pro 5, uh, we haven't had a chance to test, so but if you have that, you might want to test it out first before you buy the screen. But ASUS, they were really helpful. Uh, and when I told them, look, I don't have any other way to test the screen other than my phone, they actually sent me this. So this is the ASUS UX391. Uh, I think you can consider this an ultra light or ultra thin laptop. Um, it's actually a really cool laptop and I might do a separate review of this, but uh, I'm not going to talk too much about this. Although I did find one thing very cool. When you lift up the screen, um, you might not be able to see this well, but yeah. So the hinge actually lifts up the bottom of the laptop, which then gives space for uh, cooling, which is really, really cool. So if you look here, You've got this space right here. I thought that was really cool. But anyway, that's not so important. Um, but the good news is that I had about a week, almost a week uh, to test it out on the laptop and I tried different things and yeah, it worked perfectly fine. Uh, but there are a few details that I need to point out. So first thing is, yeah, it worked fine. It, I plugged it in, it worked and it worked on portrait, which means that when I tilted it up, um, the screen would rotate and it would show it in portrait. However, you do need to install uh, an ASUS program called Display Widget, all right? And you, only if you have that installed, then it would change the orientation. Otherwise, it wouldn't. If you try tilting it without the software, it will stay on landscape. So remember that one. Um, the other important thing is that if you are using the USB 3.0 uh, instead of a direct Type-C, uh, you need to install uh, drivers for it. And you can find all of it in the ASUS uh, product page for, sorry, for this screen. Okay, now talking about plugging into phones. Uh, so if you have a Samsung phone, this is actually compatible with Samsung DeX. Um, I couldn't test it out unfortunately because I don't have a Samsung phone. Uh, in fact, actually did, I did have a friend who tested it with me and he plugged it in, but I wasn't filming at the time. So unfortunately I can't show that to you. But yeah, it was really cool. You plug it in with your Samsung phone, uh, it detects it and it shows like a landscape version. So basically it turns it turns your phone into like a laptop and then on your laptop you have, oh sorry, on your phone you have like a mouse pad and then the screen is here, which is really cool. Now, if you don't have a Samsung phone, it still works, but it works on kind of like a duplicate screen mode. So we're meaning that I plug in my phone uh, to the screen, it shows everything, but it my screen will stay on. So whatever is showing on my phone screen will show here. Uh, which that can be an issue because it would drain the battery uh, to have it on both. Although, like I said, this have a battery, so it can take care of itself in a way. But I mean, it would be nice if there was a way to disable the screen on the phone. That would save a lot of battery on that. Um, another thing is, for some reason, unfortunately, you can't change it to portrait mode in using your phone. Right? And that would actually have been nice if, let's say, I was on Chrome or browser on my phone and I was looking if I could turn this and make a portrait and like swipe uh, on my phone to see an article or something, that would have been really nice, but unfortunately, it doesn't really work. So, the big question, should you buy this uh, portable monitor? Well, like what I usually say for the other uh, monitors that I've reviewed, it really depends on your use or your intended use of this. If it's more of an office tool where you can meet, have a meeting in a cafe or something, bring it out, you've got an extra screen to show someone uh, your, lap your laptop screen while you're having a meeting, Perfect, absolutely perfect, great size, uh, good color reproduction. Um, it would really, really be good for that. Um, if you're using it for gaming, I think it's still okay. Although I realized that even though it's an IPS panel, um, colors weren't fantastic. And of course, you don't have a high refresh rate with this. So just remember, it's your normal average 60 hertz uh, screen. Now, the other thing, if you wanted to use this, like for me, when I was testing it out, I got excited because I thought that I know I could use this like on the bus or on the train, you know, and like have a bigger screen to watch and I thought it'd be kind of cool. Um, but this is just my impression. It might be different for you, but I actually found it was a bit too big 
Um, it was a little cumbersome to hold and move around while I'm on the bus, especially if I've got someone sitting next to me. Um, and also it drew a lot of attention. Like people on my side were definitely looking at my screen. Uh, that might not bother you, but either way. So it would have been good if Asus actually had two sizes. So like this is a 15.6 inch. It would be nice if they had like maybe a 14 or maybe even 13 inch. Uh, it's a lot smaller, but still much bigger than your phone or something. And it will be a lot easier uh, to carry around. Okay, so looking at the price of this monitor. Now you can find it on Lazada for around $560, I think, although I think some of them are selling it on offer. I think I saw one at about $530, I'm not quite sure. Um, but the big question of whether you should buy this now, it's a great monitor, it's a great idea um, for a portable monitor, and I think it's really light, very easy to bring around, although like I said, for using it on the bus or train, it might be a bit too cumbersome because of its size. Um, whether I would buy this, now I'm not so sure because I have it uh, in good authority that ASUS is actually releasing a newer model of this and I don't have the details of that just yet. Um, so there are a couple of ways to look at it. You can either wait for the new model to come out and find out what are the added features if there are any or you can look at it the other way and go like, oh, so if the new model comes in, the price of this will probably drop. So. Yeah, so you can see, it, whether how you want to look at it really depends on your priorities. Are, are you okay with not getting the latest model uh, and maybe getting a, uh, getting a better value on this? Then yeah, go ahead. But either way, um, I would say wait for the new model. And I think it's going to be showcased in uh, the uh, Comex, which I think starts today. So Comex is a very big IT expo uh, held in Singapore every year. And I'm actually going to be there uh, tomorrow. So at the time of filming, basically the next day. Um, so yeah, um, like I said again, great monitor, but I would maybe wait a while and see what newer models are coming out. I'm pretty sure that they are coming out really, really soon. So guys, so that about wraps up my review. Hit the like button if you like this video uh, and remember to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications on our next video. So and anyway, so talking about Comex again. So Comex is from the 5th to 8th of September this year uh, and I'm going to be there tomorrow and I'm going to film quite a few booths uh, that, are, that will be there. Um, so yeah, if you're there on Friday, so that's the 6th of September, yeah, do look out for me. I'll be around checking out all the booths uh, and do feel free to come and say hi, all right? So anyway, I'm JP and I'll see you real soon.